A few years ago, I had a chance to talk to Randy Meisner of the Eagles and also his original quartet band member, Bernie Ledden. And, you know, the obvious question is, is to ask, when did you realize those harmonies were golden? I mean, you know, there's those moments you think in rock and roll that they sing together for the first time. And they look around and go, what? Because you don't really know till you do it, right? I asked Richie Fure, Jim Messina, and Randy Meisner, who was in Poco before the Eagles, about the great harmonies they had. Well, the Little River Band are known to have some of the greatest harmonies in rock and roll history. We're talking Goosebump City. I asked Graham Goble when they realized they had something. Yeah, I noticed that. The with the when was it? We touched on it last time or the time before. When was it that you, Glenn, and and B like sang like that and realized like at what point did you sing together and you you must have that moment to go wait a minute like listen to, this is like i called that I, I called you guys singing together god i have god moments i'm not a, i think i told you before i'm not a religious guy but i pray and i meditate and i do all this stuff but sometimes i'll see something in person i'll say that's like god god's I, I see god in that or i'll smell something i'll say that smells like god but to me the three of you guys yeah, no, you, you're you're absolutely right, and um, you know, I want to let me at least say that I think that we are all expressions of the gods. So, in other words, your show, it, it where does inspiration come from? And you just look out the door and and see the most beautiful nature that's around us. I mean, and, and the seasons, and just everything. This is all just an expression of the of the gods of the other worlds that uh, that I believe. So, um. What happened was that um, when Mississippi went to England in 1974 and, and there was Beeb, Derek and myself were a part of Mississippi and we went to London to try and uh, break the band Mississippi. And, of course, that didn't work out. And in, in, a, in a very short time of less than three months, we ran out of money and the band had broken up. And so then um, Beeb and I decided... Uh, you know, we weren't going to break up, or nor Derek as well. Um, but it was that we needed a, a lead singer, a, like a, a front man. And so Beeb knew, I think it was Beeb probably, that knew that Glenn Shark was living in, in London at that time. And 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 also at that point, our, our uh, Glenn Wheatley, who became our manager, was living in London. So we went over to Glenn Wheatley's house where he was living and and... There was a group in in England called the New Seekers. I don't know if they did anything in America, but or Canada, but they did. They, yes, yeah. So uh, there, uh, Peter Doyle was in in the New Seekers, and so we did an audition with Peter Doyle singing with Beeb and I, and that was sort of you know, okay. He was a great singer, but it just didn't gel. But then the second audition was Glenn Shorrock coming over to to our, where Beeb and I were living, and we got out a couple of acoustic guitars and we uh, played It's a Long Way There and just taught Glenn. And as soon as we sang that Hey Everybody Can't You Feel with Glenn on the bottom, we thought, wow, this is like, haven't ever heard this before. And so that was that was it. It was in 1970, late 74, and that's when... Because Glenn was pretty jaded at that time, he'd sort of he was thinking of coming back to Australia, maybe going into management or something. He'd, you know, he tried uh, twice to go to England. He was in Axiom and and then he Twilights and then he did Esperanto for a little while. Uh, so he thought, well, and he loved the song. It's a long way there. I think he still listens it. Probably his favourite LAB song. Um, so he's still doing does it in his live shows here, and I think it was that. The power of our vocals and the magical quality of our vocals that that really convinced him. Well, I got to give it one more shot, and so that was when when we all decided to come back into Australia in early seventy five and form a new band, and, and that that was the song that that did it. Interestingly, it was the song that we used to always open with. It was the song that broke us in America. I mean. And it's a song that opens ultimate hits, which is the new the new one. So it's just been leading us all the way, and like it's 
pretty amazing. I mean, let's even say, though let's it, say if you wouldn't have recorded that, let me interrupt you. If, if you wouldn't have recorded anything after it's a long way there, and someone would have discovered that song, that would be the song people say these guys could have been the Beatles or whatever term you wanted to put in there. But that's the song because you see, you hear it in that song. Yeah, it's all there. And and Beeb and I and Derek were playing that three years before Little River Band. I mean, it, it, it we were playing as part of our repertoire, but to many, it is their favorite Little River Band song. And, but it, it, it has not got the same worldwide um, impact of, uh, it's a long way th of, of uh, reminiscing, but in Europe, certainly it does. Like, w w interestingly, when th this was quite a, a very unusual um, uh, experience for me, but when I did one interview with a, a journalist in the Netherlands, and when uh, we got on the Zoom, he said, I mainly want to talk about two songs. And I thought to myself, oh, well, it's going to be reminiscing a lady. So I said, yeah, fine, okay. So he said, the two songs I want to talk about is It's a Long Way There and Forever Blue. They're your two biggest hits in, in, in the Netherlands. And I thought, this is great, because finally I was able to talk about It's a Long Way There and, of course, my wonderful Forever Blue, which I've spoken about with you. But that's isn't that fantastic in that, in that as far as um, the Netherlands are concerned, you know, Reminiscing and Lady and some of our other bigger songs, they're just other great songs from LRB, but they're not the main ones, you see. Well, well, in the Philippines, sorry, I was well, just no, saying. No, the, no, go ahead. You feel the, finish that In the Philippines, it's a song that Beeb and I had out called I'm Coming Home that's the big song in the Philippines, bigger than any LRB song. And that's included, even though it's – I put it on the on the ultimate hits because the whole LRB is playing on that. With, uh, Glenn's not – on it, but all of Derek and David and George, they're all playing on I'm Coming Home. It was the second biggest hit we ever had in, a, in Australia, behind Help Us On Its Way, and I'm Coming Home was the biggest hit we ever had in the Philippines. That's the song that that the fans in the Philippines would possibly buy ultimate hits for. So it's, it's a nice thing to have in that uh, different territories have different songs as their favourite song. It's like the world greatest hits. <laughs> You know. <laughs> There's two brand new compilations. You saw them as he was talking during the interview clips available from the Little River Band, all remastered, including some rarities. There'll be links in the description where you can pick them up and links to Graham Goble's official site as well. Join our Patreon, get early access to all the videos in this series and every other series as well. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos on social media. We'd appreciate that. I'm John Bowden, more from Graham Goble in the next few days. This is Rock History Music.